Hey guys, what's happening? I am home. I have been home, barely, for uh, a couple of weeks from Iceland. So I did the Iceland trip. I came home for like two days. I had to go to Seattle for a business trip for five days. Came home for a weekend. Had to go back to Seattle for a business trip for about three days. I'm home, and I don't have any other travel plans. What that means is, woo we I gotta do my fingers like Homer Simpson. He's like, oh, donut. Um, I don't have donuts, although that sounds good, doesn't it? Um, but I have a lot of photos from Iceland I wanna edit. I got a lot of videos I wanna make. I got a lot of things I wanna talk about. I don't know why I keep doing this, but thanks for watching. I appreciate it if you haven't yet given me a thumbs up for this video. Will you give me one? I hope, hope you like it. It's kinda of weird, like asking you to give me a thumbs up and you haven't seen the video yet. But I trust you're gonna like it. Um, subscribe if you haven't and comment. Let me know what's going on with you and what you think. So I was in Iceland for the Luminar Photo Camp. It was super amazing. On the last day we went here boom and this is the blue lagoon and as you can see i'm shooting through a window you can see all these reflections and all that this is the photo i'm going to edit which is that one shot through the window i did a bunch of things to really accentuate the photo as you can see it's a bit more colorful and bright and cheery and happy than the other ones uh, but it was a great day i mean it was mostly let's go to the blue lagoon and sit in the spa and have a beer and get a face mask oh i gotta show you the photo here's a photo Ding. Ooh, I look terrible, but that was me. Serge Romilly took that uh, with his iPhone. That's me with a mud mask on. I had to get rid of that quickly to spare you any lingering memories of it. Um, but I took a few photos there, and then we did our spa experience, hanging out in the pool. It was great. So relaxing. Highly recommend that if you're in Reykjavik. It's like between the airport and the city. Um, and then here's a bunch of stuff here that was outside of the Blue Lagoon itself and the surrounding areas. I have a photo down here I really like. This one. Um, I just think it's pretty cool. You get the star or the sun with the starburst and reflected here and then nice foreground element. You got these cool uh, uh, steam or whatever it is coming out of the geothermal plant that's next to the Blue Lagoon. Anyway, um, that's what's in this album. I'm going to go get this photo. I'm going to reset these filters and walk through it, show you what I did to accentuate the colors and all that stuff shooting through glass because sometimes you got to do it. Okay, got them all reset, let's talk about it. So here I am, we walk into the lobby of the Blue Lagoon. It's like a resort spa kind of thing. And while we're all lining up, getting our wristbands, getting the instructions from the camp uh, uh, staff, the Luminar uh, camp staff, uh, and the people that worked at Blue Lagoon because we had like a group thing going on. While we we're doing that, everybody, including me, was like, holy cow, look at the view. Uh, and as you can tell, the sunrise was popping and so, you know, it's light, right? And we're, basically it's 50 photographers in the lobby and we're all like, ah, holy crap. So we're all running over there shooting. I was shooting through the glass, not the best idea, although I was able to get outside and shoot some too anyway. However, uh, shooting through the uh, glass. So first thing I did is I go into the light filter. And as you can see here, I did a little bit of uh, adjustment there. There's before and after, primarily a tiny bit of smart contrast and bumped up shadows. I didn't do anything down below the fold and a little bit of temperature and tint. Not a lot, really. There's the before, there's the after. I didn't do a lot on this layer because I knew I needed to get rid of all these lights that are reflecting in the glass. There is a like a lens skirt thing you can buy to attach to the glass at the end of your lens. Um, don't have one and didn't have one with me. So um, I just figured, hey, that's what the eraser tool is for. So I used the eraser tool. Next up was AI Enhance. And I just popped over there, gave it a 35. And again, this is just kind of a basic thing like, okay, here's before, a little bit darker, and here's after, a little bit better of distribution of light. That's what I'm looking for. I'm trying to distribute the light, get it kind of an even exposure. And I feel like so far I've done pretty well from the beginning to these two filters, but of course I got more to do. Next thing I did is I hopped over here to color and gave it a little bit of saturation and vibrance. The color was magically awesome and happy and fun or whatever. It was really beautiful color. I love sunrise anyway. I love cloudy skies. If I got a cloudy sunrise like that in a spectacular location, I'm definitely going to amp up the colors a little bit. So I did. So saturation and vibrance. I'm often using just vibrance in my photos, but I had to give it a little bit of saturation here. Just five. I'm not going to 11, I'm just going to five. So that was color. And then I wanted to pop over here and give it a little bit of golden hour. So I gave that a 39 and you can see what that did to the photo. It's really popping some of that orange warm light that's coming from the sunrise. And one of the things I really like about this photo is that juxtaposition. Um, 
sort of the uh, the opposite color thing going on here where I got a lot of blue in the photo, but then I've got a nice pop of kind of yellow orange and being basically opposite colors, I think they go incredibly well together. So I wanted to bring up that golden hour and enhance it a little bit. And at that point, I was basically done with my base layer and I knew I had to go remove these lights and there's something over here and there's even something down here that I caught later that's like a reflection of, a, a, what does it say, restaurant or something like that. Uh, I, well, let's see, that's backward, whatever. It might be an Icelandic word. I don't know, it's something. All I know is text does not belong in the sky, so I had to pull that out as well. So that's really my next two things is the eraser and the clone and stamp to fix all of those. Okay, so next layer is the erased image layer. I'm just gonna turn that on, and what I did is I took out all these things in the sky. I took out the lights that were reflected, and I took out whatever that was over here. It was some other kind of light. If I turn that off again, you can see that right there, and these lights in the sky. So I turn that back on, and they disappear. Now you'll notice the text is still there. I tried that with the eraser, and I didn't actually get what I wanted out of the eraser, so that's why I went and got clone and stamp. So here's the thing, I've got videos about the eraser and the clone and stamp. I'll put links to them both up there. Here's the difference between the two. The eraser is you wipe over the thing you wanna get rid of and you're telling Luminar, hey, get rid of that and put whatever you think needs to be there, there, right? Get rid of that thing and put in some other thing that makes sense. In other words, you're giving control to the program to uh, when, when you use the erase. Clone and stamp is different. Clone and stamp is you're in control. You're saying, I'm gonna get rid of this thing because I'm gonna paint over it with that thing. So you're choosing the source and then painting over it. And so that actually worked better in this case of getting the reflection of that text um, out of that, um, uh, that, that bit of the sky. Because when I did it with the eraser, the cloud patterns were just not looking that great. So um, again, there's a video that I linked to up there about clone and stamp. I'm not gonna go into it here, but basically I did in clone and stamp and fixed that. And now I've got a, a fairly well balanced image in terms of the light and I've got the eraser and the clone and stamp in place. So now I kind of feel like I'm starting. Um, so that's where I went and added a new adjustment layer. And in this case, I went over here and started getting a copious amount of filters because what I wanted to do is really make the photo come alive and be vibrant like it was that morning. So first thing was light tool. I can't turn that off. So as you can see kind of the before and after um, on the light tool, let me turn this layer off. There's before light tool and there's after. So you can kind of guess what I did. I did a little bit of tint. Um, the reason why is, and you may notice this in your own photos, sometimes in these sunset and sunrises, the yellows and golds like over here start to look a little bit green. I like green, but I do not like green in my sky. This is not a Dr. Seuss book. This is Jim trying to make a pretty photo. So um, I wanna get rid of that green. So I gave it a little bit of that tint. You could probably do more, but I'm gonna fix some more of that in a minute. Um, added some smart contrast, took down the highlights pretty considerably, didn't do anything below the fold um, there on light. So there I am, and then I came over to AI Enhance, and I hit that one more time, pretty heavily, 57, and boom, there you go. You can see it really does pop the photo. That's one of the things I like about AI Enhance. It's like the easy button, it's a super filter. It gives you so much impact on your photo with one slider. It does color, it does contrast, it does uh, light levels or exposure levels. I mean, it does an incredible job. It's, it's honestly like one of the greatest filters in any product, I think. I love it. I use it all the time. I don't care that it's one slider. I'm not here trying to say, look how smart and talented I am. I'm just trying to say, I made a pretty photo. Um, and if I can get a pretty photo with one slider instead of a bunch of complicated stuff, one slider it is. So AI Enhance was next. Then I went over to color, and here I gave it another bump again, this time in vibrance. And again, that's me just amping up what I like about the photo, part of, well, part of what I like about the photo, which is, of course, the colors. Okay, having done that, I also did my fame, uh, not famous, my favorite trick around AI structure, which is masking a negative structure into sky and water because it was a soft, beautiful sunrise. Um, I felt like I wanted to amp up the negative structure. So I went in and, and brush masked that out of this, that basically that center stripe of the photo. Um, in other words, uh, you know, I could clean that up a little bit if I wanted to, but you know, oops, that's painting. I need to erase. See, when you try to do stuff and you're making a video, it's hard to multitask. I don't believe in multitasking. I think that's a made up word. It just means you're screwing up two things at the same time. Um, so 
back to focusing on making a video. So AI structure negative painted it. Um, I would say into the sky and water, but I really painted it out of that center stripe. All I'm doing is softening up those clouds and that water a little bit, just to give it a little bit more of that kind of ethereal, kind of calm um, feeling. And truthfully, I mean, there's steam. This is like a hundred degree pool, and so there's steam rising into the cool air. And um, I just think that's also going to make for kind of a soft look. So I felt like it went um, went well in that regard. Okay, next is Landscape Enhancer. And once again, I got Golden Hour. I gave it about a 14. Again, just a little bit of extra kick in that warm tone because, as I said earlier, there's warm tones and there's cool, I should say there's cool tones, a lot of cool tones, all that blue. And then there's the warm tones, the orangey yellows. They go really well together. And I didn't want to lose any of the impact of that orange. So there's before and there's after. It's not a lot, and in fact, now that I'm looking at it, I get a little happy. Um, I might wanna drag this slider a little bit more, but I gotta be careful because I actually do some other stuff. So hang on, let me put that back. <laughs> Calm down, Jim. Um, I like to uh, I like to edit photos. So anyway, um, I feel like I'm coming along, and just on this layer so far, this is kinda like my, I would call it a touch-up adjustment layer, but it's really more, more of heavy editing than I would normally do on subsequent layers. I'll often do a lot of heavy editing on that base layer, but because I did some basics there and then wanted to get rid of the, the all the reflections in the glass, I jumped up here to do more of my heavy editing. So there's before this layer and there's after. I mean, it's, it's looking very vibrant, which is uh, makes me happy, right? So by the way, make yourself happy, right? When you're editing photos, make yourself happy. That's goal number one. If you're happy with it, Forget what everybody else says, right? So that's my thinking. Okay, next I went over here and what did I do? Oh, fog. Okay, I went into the fog filter. So there, there's not really fog in this photo, but there is steam, which kind of looks like fog. I did a video about fog recently. If you missed it, go check that out. I think you may like it. I did a lot of stuff there to really accentuate the fog. I did not do a lot of stuff here. I uh, Let me turn that on. I chose dark fog. I went to about 53 and then I put a luminosity mask to apply it. So let me show you the luminosity mask. There it is. Now, keep in mind a luminosity mask. By the way, there's a video about luminosity masks if you're not familiar with them. But basically, it's applying more heavily to the brighter parts of the photo. But some of the brighter parts are up here in the sky and I, I basically took the eraser, I dropped the opacity to like 30 or 35 and I just kind of painted over that to remove some of the intensity of the fog from the sky because I feel like the fog needs to be heavier down here, and I say fog, but it's really steam, but it needs to be heavier down here around the surface of the water, which is of course where it's coming from, and lighter in the sky. So I pulled it back or dialed it back a little bit in the sky by using a, a luminosity mask and using a brush, uh, an eraser brush, to reduce the opacity of it there. So basically, um, custom mask with a luminosity mask and on top of that a brush mask to further refine the luminosity mask. So there's the before and the after. Now it does look steamier or foggier but as you can also tell, let me show you one more time, before, right, more contrast, after, less contrast. I kind of like it with more contrast so that's one of the next things I do is go fix a little bit of color work and add some more contrast back. Okay, I jump over to the Pro tab, and here is Adjustable Gradient. Super freaking great uh, filter slash tool. Video about that, I got videos about everything. I try to remember to point to them. Half the time I forget. I got a lot of videos. Um, check them out if you think it would be helpful. But Adjustable Gradient, let me turn that on. And what I did here is basically want to bring back some of the contrast. You can see how that's kind of popping now. So. Um, I didn't even move the orientation. I just left it right in the middle. So that's the default location. You can adjust that. I didn't even bother. I just added contrast in the top and in the bottom, slightly different amounts. And it actually worked for me based on where the top and bottom were located, um, based on the, uh, the alignment or orientation that uh, is the default setting. It worked for me fine. I recommend usually moving that around to get it you know, align properly to either your horizon or whatever parts of the photo you're adjusting. But in this case, it worked fine for me. And in both cases, top and bottom, it was just a contrast bump. Now, I could have gone into advanced contrast, which is very powerful, but I chose just to do kind of a global contrast to see what it looked like in top and bottom, different amounts, of course, 
and it came out looking fine. And I think the uh, the contrast looks a lot better. So let me show you that before. There it is without that additional contrast and after. If you notice, contrast is the difference between the dark and the uh, light parts. And what will happen is it'll often make your colors pop a little bit more. So if you'll see the colors, there's before um, the adjustment and after colors are definitely popping a little bit more, but I like color. So I went into color enhancer and this is where I had a little bit of fun. So there's after, you can see the before and there's the after. You can see it's got a lot more of that kind of uh, magenta tint to it. So what did I do? A little bit of brilliance and warmth, global, skip color contrast, skip split color warmth, but I went down into here to a color balance, which is hooey, so good. Video about it there if you'd like to check it out. I love color balance, massive, massive amount of control over the colors in your image. So what did I do? Shadows, nothing. Midtones, I took the magenta green slightly to the left, and highlights, I took the magenta green slightly to the left and the yellow blue slightly to the blue. All I was doing, let me turn that off. Here's the before. I feel like there's a little bit too much greenish kind of going on in the sky, especially over here. And while there's nothing wrong with it, like I said, I don't want really green in my sky. And it's really more of a muted, pukey yellow. I don't know what to call it. I just think it looks a lot better that way. It's the colors um, I like. Again, I'm going back to what I said a few minutes ago. Make your photos look however you want them to look. I remember it being a vibrant, beautiful sunrise, and um, I don't remember there being a lot of green in the sky, so I'm trying to tone that down. I do amp up a little bit of the magenta. Personal preference, do whatever you like. But the reason I chose magenta is because the opposite of magenta is green. So if I go this way, I'll get a lot of green in the highlights, which is uh, puke, right? But if I go this way, I get a lot of magenta in the highlights, and um, that's what I'm trying to do. So I don't really remember where I was. Let's call it a 12 or something. Um, and a little bit of yellow blue as well. But that's really it. I mean, there's, you know, obviously I could do more. I don't need to do more. I'm happy with the photo. Remember where we started, my friends. That's why I started shooting through the glass, tons of reflections, flat light, flat color. You know, it might have even have been a polarized uh, glass. I don't really remember. I just know that I was kind of like, oh my God, look. And it was just a great uh, scene. And um, so I shot it. I, as, as you saw in my library, I took a lot of shots. Um, but I turned it into what I more so remember. And, you know, maybe remember plus a little bit. I do like my colors. But if you do the sliding uh, window comparison, I mean, it's a massive difference. We got rid of stuff in the sky, like these uh, lights up there in the upper. Uh, and then, you know, you got all this beautiful color and light. And I think we have a nice balance of warm and cool. If you look at the before, it's kind of flat. I mean, the colors are flat. The blue is not prominent at all. But trust me, the blue in that pool is just like eye-opening blue. It's pretty crazy. Um, but there it is after. I like it. It's very colorful. Um, I can imagine some of you are saying, Jim, that blue is kind of electric. Um, and it is. Um, I like it. But if you wanted to pull down the blue, all you got to do is go back over here to the color uh, tool on the Essentials tab, go into Advanced Settings, take your blue, and you can just take the saturation down if you want to. I'm not going to do that because it's my photo and I'm going to do what I want. Um, anyway, that is it, my friends. Before, after, sliding window one more time. Before, after, before, after. I love that place. I love this photo. I love those colors. I love that you guys show up and watch my videos. It really means a lot. I appreciate it so much. You have no idea. I, uh, I have met, despite all my travels and having a lot of fun and doing work trips, which were great, and of course the Iceland trip, which was like mind-blowingly amazing, I miss sitting here in my office, making videos, hanging out with you guys. So thank you for showing up. Give me a thumbs up. Subscribe if you haven't. All that stuff. I'll see you soon, my friends. Have a great day. Thanks for watching. Take care and adios.